Hi everyone. In a previous presentation, I demonstrated the use of code that I had written in order to probe interactions in multiple regression and path analysis using the AMOS program. Specifically, the code was written for situations where you have two interacting exogenous variables that are continuous. The demonstration relied on model specifications that were consistent with Hayes process models 1 and 4. In this video, I demonstrate the use of code that I've written for probing interactions with those same models, but in situations where one exogenous variable is continuous and the other is binary. Essentially, what I've done is uh, modified the previous code in order to uh, accommodate for the fact that we have a binary uh, moderator variable. The SPSS data file, the AMOS files used, text files containing the code, and an accompanying PowerPoint will be made available as links underneath the video description. So be sure to check them out. And as usual, um, if you find the video and supporting materials helpful, please take time to like the video and share it with others. Uh, also keep in mind that the main emphasis in this video is on the use of code. So the PowerPoints from this and the previous demonstration will provide more coverage of what the code is actually instructing AMOS to do. So for our first demonstration, we're going to go over moderated multiple regression. And this is essentially the same model that we had in the previous video. Uh, in this uh, model, we have mastery goals, performance goals, the interaction between those two variables, and anxiety serving as predictors of the interest variable. Um, unlike the previous video where we had a continuous measure of mastery goals, what I've done is dichotomize that variable into um, uh, a, a binary variable. So essentially it's coded zero for low performance goals and one for uh, high, master, uh, high performance goals. Just keep in mind this is generally a bad idea but I wanted to create a binary variable for the purpose of this demonstration and so that's, uh, that's how it was formed. Um, also we have the interaction term that is formed by multiplying performance, uh, the uh, binary performance goal measure right here and the mastery goal variable right here. So that's where all of these are coming from within our model. So for our walkthrough, this is our uh, model opened up in Amos. And what I'm going to start off by doing is going over here to Analysis Properties and I'm going to click on that button. And I'm going to make sure that this button, Estimate Means and Intercepts, is clicked. So we're going to uh, do that. Next, um, you know, you can go under Output and request various things, but uh, I'm not really interested in that. I'm going to go under Bootstrap, and I, what you, you'll notice is that I've clicked on Perform Bootstrap, and I've set the number of Bootstrap samples at 2,000. You can set it higher or lower, but that's uh, generally where I set it. Uh, and then percentile confidence intervals, and we're going to set this at 95%. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to click through that, and now we're going to label the parameters that are referred to in the code that I've written. So you'll need to use the exact same labeling in order uh, for this to run. So what I'm going to do first is go under interest. I'm going to right click on this, click on object properties, and you'll see under text, there's a variable name as it appears in the data set. Uh, under parameters, I'm going to type I. So that's all it is, just I. And you'll notice that when I've typed that, now it shows up uh, right above our box here for the interest variable. Next, I'm going to kind of move this over here. And then I'm going to click on this um, path right here. And I'm going to label this A1. So I'm going to go down to regression weight. And I'm going to assign the label A1 to that parameter. I'll do the next one, and I'm going to assign this one an A2. And then for the last one, for the interaction term, I'm going to assign that path an A3 uh, right there. So there you go. Um, next up, we need to estimate the or uh, provide a label for the mean and variance of our focal predictor. So our focal predictor in the model is the mastery variable. So I'm going to right-click over here, go to Object Properties, and under parameters here, I'm going to uh, go up to mean first, and I'm going to type in FP underscore and then mean. Okay, so that's the exact label that I'm using in the code. Then for variance, I'm going to type in FP underscore VAR. All right, so now at this point, we've got everything consistent with the code. Next up, we need to actually um, uh, uh, instruct 
uh, the program how to use these labels and so again we're going to refer back to our code and that means that we're going to have to be using the user defined estimates option in the Amos program now right now at the very bottom of the screen you'll see it says not estimating any user defined estimates so what we're going to do is we're going to take that um, that text file that I've written we're going to copy uh, the code from that into um, the user defined estimate box. So, what we'll do first is I'm just going to uh, click down here at the bottom and then click on define new estimates. And so, this box is going to open up. So, next we're going to uh, pull up our text file. This is it right here. This is what I had written before. And the modification is really up here dealing with the moderator variable. So you'll notice that I just say type in the code for your two levels on the binary moderator variable. Uh, and if you use dummy coding, then leave as 0 and 1, which is what I already have for the default. So you'll see it says W1 is equal to 0, W2 is equal to 1. The W is just referring to the moderator variable. I'm just assigning that uh, the letter W. Um, if you have a different coding system, like a negative 1 and a positive 1, then you would type in negative 1 right here and a positive 1 right here, but leave the W1 equals and W2 equals where it's at. And that's pretty much all you have to do in terms of modifying the code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all this and copy it and then I'm going to go into my user defined estimate box here and I'm going to paste it in. So you can see in green it's all uh, these are all comments. They basically start off uh, the lines with an apostrophe. Um, and so now we're about ready to go. So I'm going to click on check syntax and at the bottom it should say syntax is okay. Now keep in mind, do not make any changes to the existing code and make sure that um, you've used the exact same labeling that I've used in, in uh, uh, the code that I've written. So you'll notice just really briefly right here, you'll see it's got FP underscore VAR and that's where we're estimating the variance for our focal predictor right there. And then you'll see um, we've got FP mean right here, which um, again is being estimated for the mean for our focal predictor. So uh, as you kind of scroll down in here, you'll see A1 and A3, the path coefficient uh, names that were given. And then you'll see uh, there's A2 and then there's the I for the intercept. So that's what I'm basically talking about. So make sure that's all good. We'll click on close and you'll be asked if you want to save the file. And so you're going to say yes. Um, and so when you do that, uh, basically, um, you know, you can just save it as whatever. So we'll just say, we'll just call this, I'll just actually go and save over what I've already had before. We'll save it. We'll click on yes. And so now at the bottom, you'll see it's got the name of that file, um, where, uh, where it used to say, um, that, that, uh, there was no user defined estimate. And just so you know, if you wanted to call up uh, the file in the future, you can just basically click on this. And instead of clicking on define new estimates, you can click on select estimates and then be able to find the file. If you wanted to modify the um, estimate uh, file, you can just go under edit uh, moderated, uh, basically the name of our file right there, and you can make whatever changes if that was what you wanted to do, which again, you don't want to do. Um, so now we're ready to run the model. So we're going to click on calculate estimates. And now it's run, and we are just going to go ahead and go under View Text to, uh, and then go to Estimates. And so under here, you can see that we have our regression weights. Um, and in particular, you can see this is the interaction uh, term right here in the regression weight. You can see that we have evidence of uh, significant interaction. So we do want to probe the, uh, the uh, interaction in order to kind of better understand what's going on with it. And so what we'll do is we're going to click on estimates right here, go to scalers, double click there, and then go down to user defined estimates. And so right here, um, you'll notice that we have uh, SSW1, SSW2. And this is simple slopes basically for uh, the first value or first level on our binary uh, moderator variable. So um, basically this could be considered group one and group two. So these are the regression slopes in those two groups uh, with respect to our binary uh, variable. Now, if we want to test for statistical significance, we've uh, generated bootstrap uh, confidence intervals. So you can see right here, I've just kind of clicked uh, under uh, percentile method 
uh, right here. And so now you can see that we have our original estimates. So these are the uh, simple slopes. And then you can see that we have the lower and the upper bound for our 95% confidence intervals. And so if the null of zero falls between the lower and the upper bound, then we would um, essentially assume that the simple slope is not significantly different from zero in the population. If zero falls outside of the bounds, which is what we have in both of these cases, then we would deem the simple slope statistically significant. You'll see that uh, down below, these are the simple intercepts right here. Uh, and then in this part portion of our output, we have conditional means so that we can plot out our simple slopes. So to plot out the simple slopes, you can just basically take uh, those conditional means and plug them into a different program. So what I've done is I've just created um, a, a new uh, SPSS file, and you can see there's the interest variable right there, and then these values are given um, in this uh, column for the interest variable. And then you'll notice that I've got perform and mastery right here, and basically um, we have the two levels for performance uh, goals, which is uh, basically uh, one and two right here, and then mastery, I've just assigned codes of one, two, and three, one, two, and three. So you can see that we're looking at interest levels uh, for individuals who are low in performance goals, low in mastery goals, that's the conditional mean. Then we have uh, the interest uh, conditional mean for individuals who are low in performance, medium on mastery, then we have the conditional mean for low in performance, high on mastery, and then basically doing the same thing but in the high performance goal group. I've also uh, just went ahead and under variable view, I've set it up to where uh, when I plot this out, uh, I will actually get uh, these value labels in my output. So um, essentially, that's what I've done. And you know, if you go under graphs, legacy dialogues, line right here, I'm going to click under uh, multiple define and you can see I've already kind of set this up so I just basically moved the original interest variable over to this box right here after clicking the other statistic right here moved mastery right here and performance right here and so when we click on OK uh, we get our output and so this is it right here so there's our plot of the simple slopes and so you can see that the uh, slope for the relationship between mastery goals and interest uh, is more uh, positive in the high performance goals group as opposed to the low performance goals groups. I don't know if it's theoretically consistent, but um, this is fictional data anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, so now let's move on to our second demonstration. And basically, I've just expanded the original Model 1, uh, Process Model 1, uh, and now I've included uh, interest serving as a mediator between mastery performance goals and uh, the interaction term and um, and the achieve variable right there and then again anxiety is listed as a covariate within the model so within uh, process model 7 you can see that we have a direct effect of of our um, mastery on achievement as well as the uh, covariate anxiety on achievement now in this case I basically have left this um, I in here as before so that I can if I was really just running this model from uh, the start, uh, then I would still want to be able to plot out the simple slopes for the effect of mastery on interest at different levels of performance goals. But in addition, so we're still using the same labeling of A1, A2, and A3 for the path coefficients, the same labeling for estimating the mean and the variance, or labeling the mean and variance for the mastery variable. But now, in this case, we've added this path right here, and so this path I've assigned the label B. And again, that is uh, consistent with the coding. So make sure that, um, in this case, you, you use the same uh, label, which is B. So now what we'll do is uh, let's take a quick look at the code. So this is it right here. And you'll see that really all everything up to about uh, this point is exactly the same as what we had before. But now I've added in code that allows you to calculate the conditional indirect effects uh, within the model and then also the index of moderated mediation. So what we're going to do is to go ahead and copy all of this. Everything else is already set up, so we're just going to copy this and we're going to go back into uh, Amos here. At the bottom where it says not estimating any user defined estimates, I'm going to click on define new estimates. This box is going to open up and I'm just going to paste it in. Check my syntax. Syntax is okay. We'll close. 
Again, it asks if you would like to save it. I'm going to go ahead and save it. In this case, I'm just going to uh, save over a uh, previous file. And so there we go. So now we're all set. Um, again, if we're under analysis properties, uh, you know, again, we have estimate means and intercepts right here clicked. Under bootstrap, we've got our perform bootstrap and, via, and uh, percentile confidence intervals uh, clicked and their associated values. So we're, we are all ready to go. So I'm going to click on calculate estimates. Uh, and then go back under again, under estimates. Once again, we see that the interaction term is uh, statistically significant, so we do want to probe that interaction. And um, to, to get there, we'll just go back under scalars, user-defined estimates, um, and once again, we have our simple slopes uh, for the effect of mastery goals on uh, the interest variable at, different, at our uh, low and high levels of performance goals. So those are the coefficients again. And you'll see that down below, now we have our uh, conditional indirect effects for uh, both groups. So there's a uh, conditional indirect effect um, for the uh, uh, low performance goal group, conditional indirect effect for the high group, and then there's the index of moderated mediation. So we can get our test statistics just by going under percentile method. And so now you can see once again, both, both of our simple slopes are, are positive and statistically significant. When we look at the conditional indirect effects in both of our performance goals groups, you can see that both of those are still positive and zero does not fall between the lower and the upper bound. So both of those are significant. And the index of uh, moderated mediation, there's a the value there and you can see that it is statistically significant. And once again, if you want to plot out the conditional means uh, related to our interaction, uh, these are the uh, conditional means that are given right here. So that pretty well concludes this demonstration, and I appreciate you watching.